Hey everybody, um, today I just want to show very quickly a very simple uh, circuit. This is based off the Andre Melanchenko stuff, um, very early days, this was like 1998 and, and around those sort of days. Uh, this straight piece of wire here indicates an input coil. Um, so from the input here we have one volt which is here, the uh, input terminal to here. Uh, so this piece of wire will carry one volt when the MOSFET's on uh, through the ground. Uh, so that's our input coil. Up here we have our one of our output coils, one of the partnered output coils. It has a positive EMF. Now the EMF is generated from the input coil to the first output coil, this one here. Um, so the generated EMF will be in the opposite direction and that's why we have a MOSFET here. Uh, to stop this wire conducting while the input coil is actually on. Uh, so this is a uh, off here while this one's on and off here while this one's on. So it's a flip-flop if you like. Uh, okay, so positive EMF here on this terminal through to the MOSFET, negative uh, EMF on this terminal. This wire is exactly three times longer at, in, in this simulation or at least in this diagram compared to the input coil. Uh, EMF on this uh, coil here with the diode, uh, so the same story again. So this will carry three volts, this will carry three volts as well. So three volts down here is uh, simulated. This is the electromagnetic induction, uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction if you like. So because the wire length is three times longer, uh, our input is one volt, uh, so the time rate of change, basically just stepping up, transformer induction, um, will be three volts, approximately. Okay, so uh, this this wire here, we want to block the conduction, as I was saying, while the input coil is on. Now, while the input coil is on, it takes time for the magnetic field to ramp up, to build up. Um, and we don't want to disturb that process. We we want the maximum EMF on the end of the coils, on the end of this coil here and this one here. We want the maximum EMF and we want the maximum magnetic field as well. So if we start loading the magnetic field, our input current's going to go right up. We're not going to get the same effects unless our input current goes right up um, and it's going to cost us more. So once this coil here has been switched on, uh, it then gets switched off. Um, the magnetic field is at maximum. Uh, at the same time it's being switched off, this MOSFET over here is being switched on. Um, and as this is being switched on, the EMF of the coils, um, which is the voltage, which will determine the current. So current equals V over R, uh, R being the resistance, I being the current. Um, so we'll see again because the voltage is increased. Now this coil over here has a diode on it. Everyone familiar with the Mr. Prever experiment will know that the current in this coil going, moving from right to left um, will be opposite from the current in this coil moving from left to right. And that's why the diode's there in the opposite direction. So if you imagine these straight lines, um, current will flow in opposite directions on them. And I'll show you that now. Um, so just remember this is just a very poor simulation just to, to give an idea of what's going on. It's based all on the Andre Milinchenko stuff. Um, his stuff is the earliest stuff that I've been able to find where he uh, uses uh, DC switch timing to adjust the, the resonance in the coils or the magnetic resonance. Um, uh, earlier people have existed like Stan Meyer and all that sort of thing but he Stan Meyer doesn't really do quite the same stuff he, he's slightly different in the fact that um, his circuits used to be resonant be, partly because of the capacitor the water field capacitor um, and he was using a DC pulse train as well which is slightly different uh, anyway so we can see the current moving this way on this coil and we can see the current moving this way on this coil uh, and we know that the uh, EMF on the end of the terminals here will be 3 volts. Uh, now obviously this is just a, an indication. So we're stepping up uh, 3 times, so 1 volt on the input compared to 3 volts on the output. And uh, don't forget guys, Mr. Prever experiment, it proves an increment in current. 
so what we're seeing is we're seeing the uh, current in this coil add to the current in this coil. We've got uh, motion uh, or current moving from left to right and right to left. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Floyd Sweet says it a several times. If you have a look here, hopefully I can get this to come across without too much drama. He says it several times. So uh, in the specific case of the positive charges moving to the right and negative charges moving to the left, the effect of both actions is positive charge moving to the right. Current to the right is, and basically he's telling us what's going on here. So dA, which is the uh, change of rate of um, uh, particles, um, that's the plus, and dA negative, which is the op the change of rate of particles moving to the opposite side over time, and the current adds. So we're we're looking at one ad one current add to the other, and we've seen that in the Mr. Prever experiment several times. So don't forget, uh, even though we're stepping the voltage up. We're also stepping the current up, and obviously a voltage increase and a current increase is a power increase. So a power increase over time, the average power over time is increased. Um, now you have to adjust your duty cycle and all that sort of thing on your input coil to get all this to happen. Uh, it's not just simple, just bang, bang, go. Um, there is a bit of playing around. You might have to add turns. You might have to fiddle around for a little while, it might not work the first time around, but you'll know once it's working. Once it's working, you you, you know that you've got something happening there. Um, now the timing of this circuit is fairly critical. Obviously most people are going to go, oh well your current on the input coil is just going to be much higher, uh, which it will be, but what we're doing is we're switching the input coil off uh, shorter in time so there's a shorter duty cycle on this one so all we're really doing is we're um, we're, we're pushing the magnetic field into the core uh, we're getting the um, terminal voltages up as high as we can at least within reason we don't want to go too high it just gets too dangerous too risky you damage equipment damage yourself you don't want to do that sort of stuff um, and then you can sort of start to see gains um, and obviously your instantaneous voltage, instantaneous, instantaneous current uh, equals instantaneous watts. Um, now over time it can vary, so you really want to try and take your mean or your average voltage, your mean or your average current, um, that, and then that will be your mean and or average um, watts over time. Um, in a DC pulse circuit, obviously there's going to be transients and stuff like that, so that, that sort of really doesn't come into it at this stage, but just sort of giving you the idea on what's going on. Um, and then, look, if um, if you have a minute, I highly recommend go back and read um, Andre Malenchenko's stuff. His stuff is just fantastic. There's the work there, if you go back and have a look at it, and Don Smith, all, all of the guys, all of the guys on my website, so I've got uh, literally hundreds of different documents and all that sort of thing from different people that have all done the same thing. Uh, if you look deep enough into it, it's all the same thing. They're generating energy, and that's obviously the goal. I mean, the lolly at the end of the day is, is energy. Um, so to get energy, we need to generate it, and to generate an excess of energy, we need to generate an excess of energy smartly without costing us too much. Um, now by doing this, if you go back and have a look at the thread that I did some time ago, uh, some coils buck and some coils don't, you'll see that there are some um, some very interesting uh, things going on here. Now Lenz's law doesn't apply because we essentially have a switched out system, but we're really doing all of our work. Remembering work is the magnemotive force. Um, now that's the work component of um, uh, which is current. So that's your work component. So if you were to have a transformer and if you were to um, do whatever you were going to do with it, step up, step down, you 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 want to transform, you know, one uh, one wattage to another wattage or something like that. Basically, you're at a higher voltage or a lower voltage. Um, you, it requires work, and that's the current component. So your current goes up the more you load your transformer. You can get around that, and I've shown how to do that in the uh, 
um, some coils buck and some coils don't thread. So visit visit the website aboveunity.com. Um, we're light years ahead of the rest. So come and be part of something better. You you will once you wrap your head around this, you you will see a fantastic future ahead of us. Um, we are right on the cusp of changing the world forever. So I strongly recommend jump on the website. Uh, follow the threads, read up on it, apologise for my voice, I've, I've had a bad voice for quite a few weeks now, well, lots of days anyway, um, yeah, so apologise for my voice, have fun, ask questions, um, follow Wastidi's work as well, Wastidi has done lots of this stuff and he knows this stuff inside out as well, so if you can wrap your head around these few little parts, all the rest slowly becomes easier um, once you know this stuff. Anyway, have fun, I'll get this up and we'll chat online about it.